Okay, so I'm going to report this story in the manner that it deserves, which is to say, like the news, should be reported. Without pussyfooting around the words and without subjugating myself to our YouTube overlords who watch our very speech and direct which ways we are allowed to talk and thereby think. So what I'm asking from you is some sort of something. Give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down even, give me a comment, a like, a share would be freaking fan freaking tastic because I'm going to report on this like the news without substituting words in, an, in a, a matter of fact manner with my opinion the way the news should be reported and I'm asking for your opinion and some sort of engagement back to help because this video will be bombed from orbit because you know YouTube doesn't like when people go against the grain. So, here we go. From the Daily Caller, Columbia University found this guy right here guilty of sexual assault or rape, uh, but he's got recordings that prove his innocence. Now, the crazy thing is he wasn't even allowed to put his evidence into this kangaroo court. It's not even really a court, really. Uh, this college hearing, we'll call it, because it's not really a court. They don't use evidence. They don't have due process. It's a preponderance of evidence. Is it more than likely that we believe her, or is it more than likely that we believe him, essentially? And nine times out of ten, to be on the safe side, they believe her. Because, well, you know, all men are bad. You know, that's just, right? It's a fact right now. All men are bad. All masculinity in all shapes and forms is evil, right? So... Here we have these courts, and we hear about it all the time. This is not an isolated incident. This is not isolated. Where a male student, mostly male students, will go to these kangaroo courts. They're accused of rape or sexual assault. They are kicked out of college. They're not allowed to produce any kind of evidence. And then they go to an outside court. The court says, yeah, this evidence is, is, is proof. Uh, the university is full of shit, and he's innocent. How many times do we have to hear this before we say, hey, you know what? Women are human beings, and one, and, and, and one thing I always say is what one human being is capable of doing, we're all capable of doing. So women, you are human beings, and therefore as a member of the human being race, the species of human beings, you are fully capable of lying. Point blank, believe all women my ass, okay? Believe all women my ass. It wasn't the balancing act high above Manhattan atop a water tower, nor her demands that she be fucked and fucked right this very second. But the moment she suddenly said, we're in my apartment, right? That made Ben Feebleman glad he hit record. And it's almost to the point now where you almost want to recommend to men to record every single interaction. To tell the woman, hey, I am recording this for my protection. You know, it will be filed away in some secret, you know, uh, triple verification, digital storage, something or other. And if nothing ever happens, nobody will ever see it. But if something does, I have the password, then my lawyer has to put in his password, and then someone else has to put in their password, and then it will come out as evidence or something. It's almost to that point. You know, I have lived through this. I have a personal experience through this. And it is not a fun experience to be innocent and be accused of something this heinous. It is not. And sometimes these women that are falsely accusing these men do it so flippantly. And there are hardly any consequences. Which just propagates a society of women where if they need an excuse, they come up with an excuse. And I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying, look... Women are human beings. Men can lie, women can lie. Human beings can lie. That's just the way it is. And people who you wouldn't even think lie, would lie would sometimes lie when pushed into it, when pressured, when they feel like they're at the end of the rope. They don't have any recourse. It happens. Reality. What you're about to read is based on court filings, a 30-minute recording, and an interview. The details matter in this case, so we left nothing out. Be forewarned, what you're about to read is explicit. And it is. And we should read this in a matter-of-fact manner, without pussyfooting around, and I'm sorry, YouTube, fuck you. You know, I'm not going to, on things like this that matter, satiate you. 
Appeasement doesn't work. Appeasement has never worked. That's kind of what brought us to World War II, was appeasement rather than saying, hold on, let's stop this. So let's stop appeasing YouTube. Give me some engagement. That'll help. Last May, Feebleman filed a $25 million lawsuit against Columbia University in New York federal court for expulsion and gender discrimination under Title IX. Good for him. Title IX is not a gendered thing. It should not be for women and it should not be for men. It should be for students, for people, for individuals, for human beings. Good for him. A female classmate had accused him of sexual assault. He says she assaulted him, not the other way around. Despite the evidence, the school decided he was guilty. His case is now in the discovery phase. In all court filings, Feebleman's accuser is called Jane Doe. Yes, she gets to hide behind anonymity, and that is another problem. Anytime you add anonymity, ask anybody who's been on the internet and had a comment on the internet. Anytime you add anonymity, you add the ability for someone to lie even more. If someone can lie and they are never found out who they are, well, that's horrible. He should be uh, anonymous and she should be anonymous and it should be a total thing where neither is, 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 is exposed until an actual court. Not a freaking kangaroo court at a college that doesn't care about crap. They don't care about your reputation. They will come right into your fucking classroom and pull you out on a classroom. And I have video of them doing this to me in my college. And thank God I recorded it. They will come into your fucking classroom and pull you out in front of your fucking classmates and take you in and sit you in a goddamn room. And then 20 minutes later, come back and say, well, no one ever watched the fucking security tape. But hey, you know, the security tape was a white guy with freckles and you're a white guy with freckles. So therefore, bam, you're fucking guilty. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, now the video, the security camera shows that this is a heavy set guy. Well, you're not heavy set and he's short. Well, you're not really as short as he. Okay, so it's not you. All right. And then they send you back to your classroom, and what do your fucking classmates think? They don't give a shit. Their reputation, it's tribal. It's human nature. It's tribal. You come in, even after the cops come in and say, hey, you know, we made a mistake. Uh, he's innocent. Nothing ever happened. And you know what? They don't give a fuck. Because their reputation is on the line, too, so they don't want any hint of impropriety because, well, shit, man. You've been accused of something, and the accusation is the proof, mind you. Remember, the accusation is the proof. We live in Salem, and the Salem witch trials where a woman can point. The apparition is there floating around him, therefore he is guilty. Okay, he's guilty. All right, let's hang him. Common sense. Take a step back. What's the evidence say? I don't care what people say. I hear what people say, and I take it into account, but I want evidence. That's, I mean, we live on planet Earth. We live in reality, and in reality, you need evidence. Despite the evidence, the school decided he was guilty. It's in the discovery phase. She's Jane Doe. Both sides are waiting for a former President Obama-appointed judge, Valerie Caproni, to rule on Columbia University's motion to partially dismiss the lawsuit. The ruling could come any day. Now, simple defense is no longer enough for Feebleman. No, he wants to bring it all down. The night in question was fairly routine. Yeah, it would be scorched earth policy. That's why I released the video of what happened to me on YouTube. Because it was scorched earth policy. No, uh-uh. It affected my entire remaining college career. And yeah, college was a career for me. I took it seriously. Top 1% of college students. Almost a perfect GPA except for that damn math. 12, 50 or whatever it was. Kind of, I got a B in it. <laughs> Everything else I had an A. But... It affected everything because before that point, when I was in a classroom, I was the person everybody wanted to sit around because I knew my shit. I studied. I'm smart. I knew how to explain the subject matter. I knew how to listen to people and explain to them, well, here is a method that might work better for this. And people appreciated it. And I got good grades. And I was the person where I sat at the table and everybody sat around me and we all chatted. 
after that point, and I have video. It was like a goddamn ghost town. So don't tell me that this shit doesn't affect people. Because it does. It was a brisk Tuesday night in October 2016 when students gathered in the world room on the third floor of Pulitzer Hall. Think high ceilings, exquisite art, huge picture windows overlooking the city's upper west side and Harlem. Beer and wine flowed from an open bar. Nobody's getting hammered yet, mind you. This was a graduate reception at a dignified ivy. Not exactly ripe for sloppy hookups. Uh, we're going to skip through some of this other stuff here. This is fluff stuff, adding, adding stuff. Uh, journalism. Yeah, the history of the place. The large group shrunk. Okay, here we go. Feebleman knew her a little from orientation, but they had never hung out. On this night, he seemed to hit the jackpot of hookups. At the reception, the complaint says they sat on the floor and she asked him to put his head in her lap. She later sneaked a kiss when her friends weren't looking. She poured beer down his throat during a drinking game. She then asked him to walk with her to the roof where she climbed atop the water tower and beckoned him. She took off her top while he unclasped her bra. He sucked on her breast. She called him a pussy for being afraid when they climbed the tower in the dark room, in, in tower in the dark, when he wouldn't go near the edge like she did. So she uh, is showing behavior of being a risk taker, and risk takers are those who are most likely to uh, do these kinds of actions. Uh, number one, they're all, they're the kind who have uh, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever, and go out and seek. Uh, people outside the, the, the marriage they're individuals who are more likely to speed they're individuals who are more likely to take these actions and they're also individuals who are more, li more likely human nature risk takers uh, who are more likely to come up with false accusations it's just human nature, it's psychology it's just human nature it's, there's really no argument around it, that's just the numbers that's what proof and studies have shown he watched as she did a perfect backward roll off the side of the water tower she taunted him about being a marine who was afraid of heights. She straddled him on top of a ladder, then slapped him hard across the face and bit his lip. Ah, so she's one of those. He hated the lip biting and told her to stop. None of this made him any less attracted to her, but according to him, he was steadily becoming more cautious. Uh, he's getting the hint that something is not right. She talked to him in a hot, vulgar way back at her apartment. Don't you want to fuck me, she asked, multiple times on tape, in clear words. In fact, she affirmed her desire to have sex with her classmate no less than 29 times. She wanted him to fuck her, and she wanted it, her word, hard. He wanted that too, but something in his gut told him he better protect himself, and not with a condom. The camera is the greatest protection tool that we have today. Uh, the camera and the internet are combined the greatest weapon you could possibly think of. Uh, and it sucks that we're in a, a society where we, we have to even think about doing this, but we do. I mean, that's just where we're at today. And this is important stuff for men and women to know is happening. All right? This is important stuff. Many lives are affected by this. After messing around for approximately 15 minutes, kissing... Fingering, grinding, throat pressing, or choking, as Columbia's filing asserts. She reiterated her desire for rough sex, and he pumped the brakes. He thought of the squeaky bed, paper-thin walls, and her roommate. When she refused to take no for an answer, he pressed record. And that's when he said, yeah, nope, 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 nope. Uh, I'm going to record. In total, he claims she bit him three times, yanked his pants down, and grabbed his buttocks in an attempt to force her mouth on his penis. So she attempted to sexually assault him, and he's the one that gets kicked out of college. He's the one who has to go to court and file because he was sexually assaulted, and he has recording of it. So what? What is the defense now? Everybody who says that he's still guilty or he's in the wrong, what is your defense now? What is your defense? How are you going to defend him being kicked out of college? Why, why, why him? Why? Feeble ha Feebleman had already sensed that things might go sideways. Some things made him nervous. When he first tried to leave, she started to cry. He couldn't leave a woman in tears. 
He wanted to leave on positive terms. He liked her. He liked his classmates. He didn't want to be known as the class scum, which really sucks because uh, as men, we are kind of in that position. If a woman is in that position and we take the action that we should, which is leave, well, you're leaving yourself open two different ways. One, you look like an ass in front of people because she's going to tell them her story and they're obviously going to believe I'll win because that's the society we live in. A woman says something happened and a man says, that's not what happened. What are you talking about? Well, the woman is the one that is most likely, usually, believed. Two, you're opening yourself up because you, you don't have a full recording. What if she says something else happened and you came back or something like that? So you can't leave it on those terms. It's almost like a moral and a legal obligation. You just almost can't. You're stuck. Converse, conversation took the form of a nightmarish loop. She demanded rough sex. He said no. She asked why not. He told her she is too drunk, but later said he didn't believe it. She had stopped drinking hours earlier, he recalls. She was just trying to employ what he describes in court filings as the nuclear option, which he believed would make the conversation stop. Again, he tried to leave. Again, she demanded that he stayed. So he was thinking that saying you're too drunk would be the nuclear option, meaning it would end it. Hey, you're too drunk. I can't. I can't. And she'd be like, okay. It didn't work. In the morning, you're going to thank me for not taking advantage of you, Feebleman says on the recording. She didn't agree. Or, I'm going to apologize, she replied. Or, I'm going to apologize, she replied. Okay. In the morning, you're going to thank me for not taking advantage of you. Or, I'm going to apologize. I don't know why she said that, but okay. After many of her pleas and more of his denial, she seemed to snap back into consciousness. Oh, shit. Fuck. Shit. And this. Jesus Christ. Okay, wait. No, 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 no. Wait. No. What's going on? He asked if she's okay. After her confusion seemed to ease, she returned to her refrain, I think you want to fuck me. From the recording. Him. I do want to fuck you now. Her. So do it. Muster the courage. Him. You know how bad I want to hold you down and fuck you hard? Her. I want that. Eventually, she asked him to snuggle her. He agreed to snuggle her. For the entirety of the 30-minute recording, she forbade him from leaving. She forbade him from leaving? I mean, goddamn, reverse the roles for this, people. Switch it. What if it was a guy doing this and it was a girl trying to leave and the guy wasn't letting the girl leave? How demonized would the guy be? How fucked? How buried under the societal prison? Maybe not prison, prison for sure, but probably, but definitely societal prison, because let's face it, the highest court in the land is public opinion. On tape, he can be heard cooing at her cat and tucking her into bed. He can also be heard declining her relentless demands for sex. He seemed to soothe her by telling her what he wanted to do to her at a later date. Some of his fantasies involved tying her down and fucking her like a piece of meat. You've never been made into a little whore, bent over and fucked. You ever been fucked like that? Her response, no, I haven't. Show me, show me. His reply, I'm not going to show you tonight. At no point did she appreciate him saying no. After a lot of begging and pleading, she asked, why not? He replied, because I'm going home to get sleep and you're going to bed to get sober. She continued trying to coax him. I don't get why you don't want to do it now. I want to. Please, please, Ben, I want you. Reverse the roles in your head. If it doesn't make sense with the roles reversed, it just doesn't make sense, period, then. That's just... Phew. Unbelievable. I can't believe he is the one who gets kicked out of college. I mean, wait a minute, what am I talking about? Yes, of course I can believe he's the one. <sighs> Welcome to current year, as they would say. She seemed upset by his refusals, at times questioning her own attractiveness. Here, Ben, she said on the recording, you don't want to fuck me, and that disappoints me. And this, you think that I am gross? To that, he, he replied, I don't think you're gross at all. I think you're gorgeous. After 2 a.m., Feebleman finally left. Woo! It wasn't even a day later when she accused him of sexual assault under the university's Title IX statute. She didn't seek medical attention or call the police. Ben tried to have sex with me, she told her roommate after he left. She also told her boyfriend, who allegedly questioned how drunk she was. She called him an asshole and hung up. 
That morning, she informed the school that feeble women had sexually assaulted her. Yep. It fits the uh, general motive operandi, if you will. She didn't want her boyfriend to be upset or mad at her, so she decided to try to get this young man into trouble. Even though it appears by all things that I have read and heard on the case that he did the correct thing. Columbia University allegedly investigated the matter for six months. In June 2017, a panel of three administrators held a kangaroo-style hearing in which they never used any evidence he provided or asked Jane Doe a single question about his side of the story. So basically, they took her side of the story. They said, yeah, okay, you're correct. That's it. Uh, that's all that me we, we need. Uh, believe all women. Women are fully, uh, are, are incapable of lying. The women are wonderful affect the whatever you want to call it for some reason. The accusation was the only proof that they needed. Neither of the two investigators in the case even showed up. In the end, the school withheld, its, withheld his degree, effectively ending his career in journalism. Whew! Ouch, man. Ouch. Fight back, my man. Fight back, Ben. Fight back. At one point, they warned him not to utter a word about a medical report he obtained that addressed her level of capacity based on, a, on 700 photographs and the 30-minute recording. According to his legal complaint, a witness, Jane Doe, called to support her in Columbia's case against him, later called Feebleman and told him that she sometimes mixed pills and alcohol to get over a boyfriend. If he mentioned the report, Columbia authorities said, they'd throw him out of the hearing and proceed without him. Just, just... Yes, if you come up with any evidence, we're going to throw you out of the court. No evidence is allowed. This is a zero-evidence court. Feebleman had seven minutes to speak in which he said, please, please ask me about it, referring to his allegations against her. School administrators declined. He had no voice, literally. Because, you know, men, men don't matter. Only the woman's voice matters. Only the woman's point of view matters in these cases. Someone explain to me why? Someone? Someone? Afflicted with laryngitis that day, he sat there silently with his lawyer, who also was allowed to speak. <laughs> Bring your lawyer, but yeah, don't let it, don't have, don't, yeah, don't expect anything. <laughs> In less than 24 hours, the panel declared him responsible for sexual assault as the result of consensual non intercourse sexual contact he had with her prior to her demands for intercourse. God. Bless it. So they're trying to nail him for touching her prior to her demands for intercourse, so prior to the point where he started recording, but based upon her recording, I don't believe anything was non-consensual. I believe she was the instigator. I mean... We can only go based upon evidence. And evidence shows that she was more than likely the instigator. On the other hand, the school treated his allegations of se sexual assault like a joke, citing insufficient evidence that they wouldn't let him produce. They wouldn't even... And the notion that, it, that even if it happened, he would have liked it. The school declared that Jane Doe was not responsible for any alleged assaults on him. Columbia University let him graduate in May, but retroactively expelled him in June and ditched the diploma he'd spent the past year and a half and the rest of his GI Bill earning. Discovery is sticky. Neither side can agree on what should be handed over to the other's camp. All of it. All of it. What should be handed over? All of it should be handed over. All of it. Columbia's university, Columbia University is demanding Feebleman's military records. Why? Are they trying to victim blame? Why does whatever he did before this instant have anything to do with this? Are they searching for something to try to victim blame? He served in the Marines for six years and left with on an honorable discharge. His legal team is arguing against providing them. They have not stopped asking for it, even though it is irrelevant to the claims of the lawsuit, his lawyer 
Kimberly Lau tells me. This shouldn't be a fishing expedition, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't. What are they looking for? They're looking for dirt. They're looking for something to say, oh, he one time stepped on an ant and didn't apologize to the ant's family members, so therefore he's a horrible human being. That's what exactly what they're doing. And I know this because human nature, when this stuff happened to me, people came up with any possible, possible, possible thing, any tiny little slight, and it was proof of what? Proof of what? I'd been proven innocent beyond a shadow of a doubt. But human nature, you know, human nature. Uh, I've ranted about this long enough. I appreciate your time on this, but some engagement would be awesome because absolutely this video is going to be hit. But this is important stuff because this affects everybody. This affects the point of view. Uh, this affects policy. This affects law. This affects lives. This affects finances. This affects a lot of things in a lot of areas and fuck YouTube's algorithm for censoring my speech so I will see you guys on the next one I appreciate your time if you made it all the way to the end you absolutely fucking rock